Hello guys and welcome back to the 15th part of the Kotlin Newbie to Pro series. In the last part you learned about lists, so we created a list here of integer values and then we accepted 10 user inputs, 10 numbers that we converted to an integer here and added each number to our list so we can print that list afterwards. So we basically saved all the 10 numbers that the user entered in the console. In this video I will show you something about the when keyword with which you can simplify some types of if statements and if conditions. So I'm going to remove that code and I want to create a little program that lets the user enter his age and we want to do something and print something according to what age the user entered here so for that I create a variable age and set that to read line as you know it and we have to convert it to an integer again. So the user enters just a number here and we convert it to an integer because it's, an, it's the age of the user and that's a number. And if we now want to print something according to what age the user entered here we can actually do that with if conditions. So I prepared that already and just to show you, I paste it here. So first we want to check if the age is in the specific range from zero to five. So with that in keyword, you can check if a single value is in a range. And if it is, then we want to print you're a young kid in the case that the age is in the range 6 to 17, then we want to print you're a teenager. If it is exactly 18, then we want to print a line, finally you're 18. If it is 19 or 20, we want to print you're a young adult. And in the case of that the age is in 21 to 65, the user is an adult. And in all other cases, so if he is older than 65, we want to print you're really old. And with the when keyword, we are actually able to do exactly the same functionality much easier. So as you can see, in each if condition here, we want to do something according to what the age of the user is. So in each condition, we have that age. And every time we have this, every time we an if condition and all the following else if conditions depend on a single variable, then we can and should use when. So I make myself a little space here and then we write when and inside of the parentheses we have to put the value of which the when expression is dependent. So in our case, if we look at our if conditions here, then all the time we check if the the age is equal to a value or if the age is in a range. So all the if conditions are dependent on our age. And exactly that age we need to put in the when expression followed by curly brackets here. And for the first condition to translate that to the when expression we can simply write in 0 to 5. And then we have to make that arrow and after that arrow, we write what will happen if our age is in 0 to 5. So we want to print the line, you are a young kid. And now we go on the same way. So we just write in a new line the next case of the if condition. So if the age is in the range of 6 to 17, so we simply write in 6 to 17, make that error again, and then we want to print you are a teenager. So everything that when expression does currently is that it will check if our age is in the range of 0 to 5. If it is, then it will print you are a young kid. If it is not, then it will check the next case if the age is in the range of 6 to 17 and if it is it will print you are a teenager. So to actually have the same behavior of our if conditions we have to add some more lines. Now we want to check 
if the age is exactly 18 and for that we have to simply write an 18 here and then we want to print finally you are 18. So when we use the when expression we don't have to actually compare the value to the number so we don't have to use comparison operators here we can simply write the 18 in one line here and check if the age is 18 and if it is it will print that line for the next case that the age is 19 or 20 we can simply separate the two ages with a comma so we can write 19 or 20 and print you are a young adult. So by separating several values with a comma here, we can check if that age is equal to that value or that value. And we could even check if it is equal to another value. So we can concatenate several values here with which the age is compared. For this else if condition, we have to do the range check again. So in 21 to 65, then we want to print you are an adult. And as we had in the if condition that in all other cases we want to print you are really old, we can do exactly the same in the when expression. We also have to use the else keyword here. So else in all other cases we want to print you are really old. So that whole when expression now does exactly the same as that whole if condition, but the when expression is much more compact and it is more clear what it does. So you should prefer that type of checking if a certain variable is in a range or if it is a, an exact value. If all the conditions depend on that single value. Also you don't have to use this with integers only. Instead let's say we let the user enter a string here so we move, remove the conversion to an integer. Of course it will now throw us an error here because we compare a string if it is in a range and that won't work. But for example we could write hello here as a string and then it will check if age is equal to hello and if it is it will print you're a young kid. So you can do that type of rent checking with any type. But what happens if we, let's say we have now um, another variable here, let's call it x whatever and set it to 5 and if there's now a, a single if condition inside of the whole condition here that is dependent on that other variable x. For example we want to check if h is equal to 18 and x is equal to 6. Then we can't convert the whole if condition to a when condition anymore just because we have that variable x in it because the when expression is only dependent on one single variable and we cannot make this comparisons here dependent on two different variables so we in the case of that the age is equal to 18 and x is equal to 6 we can ask if the age is 18 but we cannot ask in the same case if x is equal to 6 so we could do that instead of the print line statement that we write here if x is equal to 6 and then print the line here that whoops um, finally you are 18 so that would work but we cannot check if x has a certain value on the left side of an arrow here and what I think is also important to mention is that let's say we want to execute several commands in one condition here then we cannot simply print another line here with whatever another line as you can see it throws us an error because that won't work 
In that case, we have to use curly brackets again and put that second print line statement inside of those curly brackets. And in that case, it will check if the age is in the range of 0 to 5. And if it is, it will execute those two lines. So now I want to show you what our program exactly does. So for that, I will revert all of our changes here. Like this. And I will remove that whole if condition here and that variable x and run the program. So now it expects us to enter a number here. So let's say I am four years old. Then it tells me you are a young kid because our age that we entered here is in the range of 0 to 5. If we run this again and I enter 18 for example, it will tell me finally you're 18 because the age is exactly 18 and then it will print finally you're 18. And finally let's say I am 70 years old, then it tells me you are really old because none of those cases um, fit to the 70 so it will jump to the else condition and print you are really old. So for this video I only have a single homework for you. The task is to ask the user where he's from and if he for example enters India then you should greet him in Hindi. If I run this program again and he for example tells us he is from the USA then you should greet him in English. Another option is Germany. You should greet him in German. And finally, if he is from Russia, for example, then you should greet him in Russian. And if he enters something that we don't know, for example, Poland, and enters, then you should simply print that you don't know that, so you don't have to cover all the countries of the world. For that task you should use a REN expression just as we did in the video. And keep in mind that you now have to retrieve a string from the user input, so not an integer anymore, so you don't have to convert anything. And I think that's just a good practice to do that with strings once and use them inside of a REN expression. So finally I want to go through the solution of the homework of the last video where you should um, let the user enter five numbers in a row and then simply print those five numbers in reverse order. So for that I created an empty mutable list because we want to add items into that list. That is why we have to make it mutable and it is a list of integer values. In that for loop I go through the range from 1 to 5, so I execute that piece of code exactly 5 times and in each iteration, in each round, I save the current entered input of the user in the variable x, check if it is not equal to null and if it is then we add that to the list. So after that first for loop at that point, we know that there are five values in our list and those five values are the numbers that the user entered in the console. So we can make another for loop here where we go through the range of numbers of the size of the list minus one. So if we have a list for example list of one, two, three, then the size of the list is three. but because we want to access the list at a specific index here of i and indexes start at 0, so this is zero, the 0th index, this is the first index and this is the second index. Because of that we have to subtract 1 of the size of the list. So the size of the list is 3 and we subtract 1 of that so we are at 2 and 2 is exactly the last index of the list. So we go down from 2 here in that example and go down to 0. So we simply print that list in reverse order here. The harder version of the homework was about to calculate the first n Fibonacci numbers. So for that I created a list 
a mutable list and put two starting values in it, 0 and 1, as I told you in the last video. After that I call the readline function and convert the result to an integer again and save it in the variable n. Then we check if n is not equal to null, so if we check if everything went well and if it did we want to execute that for loop. So for demonstration I just create a temporary list here with 0, 1, 1, 2, 3 and 5 for example. That is the Fibonacci series for the first six numbers. And in that for loop we go through the range from 2 to n minus 1 and that are basically the indexes which we will access in the list. So we will start at index 2 which is this one because the first two values are already set so we don't need to modify them. They are already in the list from the beginning on and we have to subtract one from the n because that is the same reason we had to subtract one from the list size in the easier homework because the list size is always one larger than the highest index of the list. So we start in that loop with i is equal to 2 and then we add the list at the index of i minus 2 so in the first iteration it is the list at index 0 and add the list at index 1 upon that so that is the list at index 0 and that is the list at index 1. We add those two together and add the result to the list again. So the result of 0 plus 1 is 1. So we add the 1 to the list. In the next iteration we do the same for those two values and add the result to the list. Then we do the same for those two values and add the result to the list and so on. I hope that is clear for you somehow. If it is not then don't mind asking your questions in the comments so I can answer them. And yeah, that's basically it for this video. Have a good day. Bye bye.